In this video, I am going to compare these two curriculums, Master Books Language Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 and The Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts and Literature Level 1. My name is Kristen. Welcome to my channel, Fearlessly Loved, where I talk about everything homeschool, family, and faith and where I really hope to be an encouragement for you on this homeschooling journey of yours, on your mom journey, on your faith journey, whatever that looks like. If you like my video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to press the little bell icon to let you know when I put new content out there. Don't be shy to leave a comment below. Ask me any question that you have. If you want to let me know what language arts curriculum works best for you, whether it's the good and the beautiful, whether it's master books, whether it's something completely different, let me know what's working for you. I'd be happy to hear about it. So today, first of all, I want to start off saying, um, just, you know, putting a disclaimer out there. I know that this is a hot topic. My intention isn't for this video to be hot and controversial and you know i'm not taking sides this has absolutely nothing to do with me taking sides with the good and the beautiful and master books that is absolutely not my intention whatsoever what i do want to do what my intention is for this video is for you for those out there who are really truly trying to decide um, you know if it's a toss-up for you between the two curriculums which by the way these are two awesome really awesome options for first grade you know we were doing this um, these two in first grade for my daughter um, they're two really great options um, my intention is not to bash one company or the other. I am not bashing either of these companies. We use the good and the beautiful for a bunch of our subjects. We use master books for our, some of our subjects as well that we've tried out. And, um, you know, so we, we pull from both in our homeschool and both are really great homeschooling companies and curriculums to use. That said, there is one between these two language arts curriculums that we enjoyed much, much better um, when it comes to language arts. Um, and I want to share that with you. I, I know when I was trying to decide when we started homeschooling, when I started homeschooling last year, six weeks into my, daughter, my daughter's first grade year, um, I had, you know, first of all, I, knew nothing about homeschooling until I watched all of the amazing videos on YouTube um, that so many amazing mamas have put out there reviewing curriculums and trying out different things for their kids and um, you know putting out reviews that have been so helpful and I really really appreciate it for myself seeing curriculum comparison like I, I needed the input I wanted to hear the input and that is what I want to do for any moms out there who are torn. Okay, so let's get right to it. So we started out with Master Books last year, Master Books, Language Lessons for a Living Education. It was fairly new. I believe that was the second year that um, this level one was out there. And I picked it because I knew that my daughter needed something that was just... Um, you know, short, not too involved, not too time consuming, not too complicated. And I just figured that this would work well. I heard a lot of good things about it. And when we started out with this curriculum, it's a five day a week curriculum. The lessons are very short. There's, a, there's three books that come along with it. So basically every day there's, um, there's picture studies, you're reading from the book every day. The first book in here is called Not Too Small at All. It's a picture book. And, um, you know, the child for the level one are doing simple activities, circling sounds, learning letters and sounds like sp, tw, w, and m mm for that week. There's a lot of, there's a lot of copy work in here. 
as is typical of master books, which is great. Um, learning, there's some handwriting. And then at the end of the week on day five, they enter these words, usually, yeah, six words that they draw a picture of and that they write and write a definition for in the end of their book, in their dictionary that they get to fill out in the end. So that happens um, on day five every week. There are spelling words, I believe, in here, but it is, unfortunately, it's not part of the actual curriculum. Um, it's in addition, I believe. So that is basically language lessons for uh, living education level one. So I, our experience with it was really good in the beginning. I felt like I needed to, because the lessons were so short, I did have to supplement a lot with it, even though there was a book that came with it. The reading that um, was required in here was just, you know, a couple paragraphs um, a couple times a week that they would have to read out of the book, um, which was fine. You know, we're reading, we were reading books all the time in our homeschool last year. Um, so that wasn't that big of a deal. The actual lessons in the book where they were learning concepts like nouns and verbs and sounds in particular like sp or qu or, you know, a gh, the silent h, g or w, w, h, um, where there were lessons in there. It was just a very short couple pages of practice um, and you know, not a whole lot of repetition. So that was one thing that as we worked through the lessons, as the weeks went by in this language lessons for a living education, that was something that I was starting to see um, halfway through the year that she wasn't retaining a whole lot since concepts were introduced at certain times um, there was a lack of repetition for the, those concepts and there was a lack of recitation for those concepts. And, um, you know, when they were brought back sporadically, like it was, it was too sporadic for us. That's just the way that my daughter learns. You know, it, she needs, it doesn't stick one time. It needs to be a repetitive thing and there needs to be like a, an output of the, the recitation, like hearing her say the words or and, and writing the words and writing the sounds and, you know, visually being stimulated in certain ways, audibly being stimulated and, you know, like using all the senses kind of in, in learning. And that's just the best way that she learns. And I found that very much lacking. And what was happening, she wasn't remembering the concepts that she was learning. She wasn't remembering the sounds. Um, you know, I, I remember in particular like the GH or the W, like she wasn't, she wasn't learning. And I was starting to see that the spelling program in here wasn't working. I, I didn't realize that I was supposed to be doing spelling. So spelling was a whole other, a whole other thing that we needed to supplement into it. Writing, was another thing that I was supplementing, a whole other writing program that needed to supplement in there. Um, we did a lot more reading. So it was, it was a lot of different things that I was pulling from that I started realizing that I didn't necessarily have to do if I found another curriculum that kind of included more in it. And um, so that was the one of the things. It wasn't repetitive enough. It wasn't. It didn't do enough to for my daughter to absorb what was being learned. Um, the second thing I didn't love about language lessons for living education was the dictionary day. I did not like dictionary day. I actually hated dictionary day when it was just basically the whole time um, they're just writing writing the words in the dictionary, drawing pictures, and, um, you know, writing down little definitions. And I don't know, it just seemed tedious for me. It, it was a day of the week <laughs> that I dreaded. Not, I, that's a strong word, but like, it was just like, uh, um, it's dictionary day. Just because, I don't know, it just seemed to take a lot of time 
for my daughter and I felt like that time could have been used in a better way for my daughter in particular. I, I didn't see much of the point to that and the fact that it was every single week. I didn't love that. Um, and I already kind of mentioned the spelling. Like there wasn't, there wasn't a solid spelling review program in this curriculum, which I was really sad when I realized that that it was missing from here. Another thing that I didn't love at all was the way that they um, utilized the books. Um, so the first book was call, is called Not Too Small at All, which is a great book. I love the book. But it just seems like that was very monotonous in that every week they kept coming back to the same same thing like okay summarize what you've read from here next week summarize what what you know the beginning of the story summarize again summarize again like what happened in the story like for half the year and I was kind of getting bored with it um you know we went through the book very 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 slow and it, it just felt like they were just asking the same questions to go over the same um the same storyline for so long um that you know I, I was kind of like getting tired of the story it just it felt like it was going so slow so that's language lessons for a living education level one now level two level three level like you know all the other levels i can't say maybe they're better maybe you know maybe it's a different story maybe we'll go back to that i don't know who knows um level one last year for us didn't work all right on to good and the beautiful's language and literature level one so here's the thing if we started this at the beginning of zoe's first grade year this would not have worked out it was way too advanced for her in the beginning of her first grade year i know that a lot of homeschoolers say that with the good and the beautiful language arts it tends to be a little bit advanced and um sometimes you know, kids are like a level behind their actual grade year that they're in, or, you know, it's, it, it just depends on the child. Mine was not ready for this at the beginning of the year. So honestly, it was good. It was a really good thing that we started with this one. We just switched over to this, started level one halfway through the year. And let me tell you, it was a perfect time to pick this up at the very beginning. Um, what we love about, the Good and the Beautiful's language arts is that they have so much review of sight words every other day. They are practicing their sight words. And again, it's a, it's a lot of review. It's not a lot of review. It's a good amount of review of, you know, like five minutes. Five minutes of just going over sight words. And as, you know, there, there's a lot of evaluation in here. There, there is timing and testing in here, which I actually, and my daughter actually loves that. Like, I, I thought that she would feel the pressure of being timed, you know, to um, read or timed um, to like spit out information. I thought that that would like create pressure, but she loves it. It motivates her. And, you know, she loves to see, you know, each time she gets tested, tested in, you know, reading words in a certain amount of time that she gets better and better and better and she sees her progress and she sees that she is becoming a better reader and that just fills her bucket. Like that, that fills her up, gives her confidence in her reading, which she really, really has needed. So here is an example of that. When each time um, my daughter mastered these sight words, a column of these sight words, you check it off to say mastered and then she gets color in an animal so simple but she absolutely loved it like she loves going through that um there are so this is like the first unit and there's a unit overview here these are the spelling words like it's just very clear and very thought out um this is what is expected for spelling for this unit within, you know, like whatever amount of time, like a month's time, a month and a half's time to go through each unit. And we're practicing the spelling words 
throughout that unit which are incorporated into the curriculum which makes it easier um so it's just i love how it's just very thought out and very structured at the same time there is it's always different every day is different like i said with uh language lessons master books language lessons every friday or every day five is the dictionary like with this it's just the pace is very thought out and how what they're learning gets reintroduced is very structured and thought out how you know there's a few days of learning one concept or there's like a week of or two of learning a certain concept where you know like i said there's more practice there's more exercises to learn whatever lesson or whatever sounds that they're learning or what whatever um spelling rules it is that they're listening that they're learning um so it's very structured and thought out in that sense but at the same time the lessons are um done in such a creative way where it does switch up it switches up from day to day to day to day no lesson is ever the same no lesson really follows like the same exact format from week to week so it's much more flowing and creative much more of a flowing and creative kind of curriculum i absolutely love how each how this this how they um practice sounding out words with the different you know with the hyphens in the middle and they learn the different sounds w i m swim um r a f t raft uh that really 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 helped has helped my daughter learn and you know so look at all that practice right there my daughter needs all that like she needs she needed that practice and that repetition she needed to hear herself sounding out the words um and then in each after each lesson there's independent practice we don't uh, my daughter's not necessarily at the point especially in first grade where she was able to do thing this stuff independently but it was great because it was just it was more practice so i love how there's picture studies in here and biographies where they're learning about different writers um this one they're learning about beatrix potter and her life and there's poetry in here every day there is a checkbox which i don't know if you guys know but i love check boxes so i love the good and the beautiful because there's check boxes all over the good and good and the beautiful stuff so um every day they are doing their own personal and independent share shared reading reading which that is in every lesson as well um there's you know coloring and creating in here as well this is a part of the curriculum where they're learning spelling where they spell out the words in the opposite you know whether it's capital letters or lowercase letters i guess that's a way for them to learn spelling and then they're clapping at the sounds every time they're introduced to new spelling words uh there's there's writing in here i love um how they teach creative writing where they actually are able to write their own stories and they're encouraged to write their own books in here and illustrate them writing letters what a letter looks like here's an example of a picture study my daughter i know that some kids like they could care less about this stuff my but my daughter eats this stuff up she loves um it's really teaching her how to about color and shading and highlighting and what art is truly about really light and dark and shadows and she's learning to um mix her colors to create highlights and to create her dimensions in her shadows and highlights from this language arts curriculum which is you know that came unexpectedly um, so she just really likes these little activities where she gets to highlight or you know she loves the cute little pictures and the colors and there are little crafts in here nothing too complicated everything is just within these pages of cutting out and gluing and after every unit there is an assessment 
I love that. I love being able to, you know, for her to be able to do assessments to know where she is lacking and where she needs more practice. That was something that was lacking in um, the Masterbooks curriculum. So there's also a reader that comes with it. I don't know what it is about this reader. It has that retro vintage vibe with, you know, in the illustrations. And it starts out with big letters and short stories. And then as they are progressing in their reading, the stories get a little longer. The words get a little smaller. Um, and towards the end, they're, you know, progressing into, you know, multiple chapters per story. And tell you what, my daughter really loves, looks forward to reading the stories in this reader. So this has been a hit as well. The reader has been a hit as well. We're going to continue. We're finishing. We're probably going to spend half of this year finishing out level one of this. And we will move on to uh, level two, the good and the beautiful language, arts, and literature level two. I'm trying to think of things that I don't like about this. Um, I honestly can't really think of any. So this curriculum also comes with a bunch, a lot of phonics cards where they alternate in between um, reading those sight words and practicing the sight words every day and doing that for five minutes at the beginning of the lesson or practicing the phonics cards for five minutes. So these are the phonics cards and we'll just go through these. Um, this is a sound. The sounds are on the back and she just memorizes and recites the sound for each card. And we just go through these um, and work on them. It's just a little bit that goes a long way. It's a good amount of time that we're spending on language arts um, we're not doing, I am supplementing, I am supplementing reading and, you know, spelling and things, but it's not, you know, we're doing Explode the Code and handwriting. We're doing good in the beautiful handwriting as well. But like, it's not, it's not the amount of supplementation that I was doing with master books. I felt like I was just had to do a lot more thinking, whereas this, it's just like, I'm confident that she is learning in the way that this um, teaches and in, in the the approach that the good and the beautiful takes with teaching language arts I'm I'm much more confident for my own daughter now if your child I do not doubt that your child if you're using master books language lessons and your children are learning leaps and bounds with it i i don't doubt it that is amazing keep going with it like that's awesome that's it for today i hope this video was helpful for you if you were having a hard time deciding between these two curriculums like i was or if you don't know what to do for language arts for your child i hope this gave you a little bit more insight into our situation and i hope that you're able to go into your decision with a little bit more information or a little bit more insight. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you on the next video.